Hey, welcome to the Daily Drop of Christmas, which is our Daily Drop of Hope during the 12 days of Christmas. It is the fourth day of Christmas. I hope you're continuing to celebrate, listen to Christmas music. Uh, We are thoroughly enjoying it as we work through the work of Christmas, this little devotion by Bruce Epperly, which is the 12 days of Christmas with Howard Thurman, where we're looking at the work of Christmas, the challenge uh, to do justice, love mercy, walk humbly, the work of peacemaking that Christmas brings into our hearts and into our lives, right? Every day of it. So wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, thanks for making uh, this a part of your day and Christmas experience, right? So our theme today is the promise of Christmas, right? And so we're gonna work through uh, today's reading. You can follow along, whatever it might be, Uh, but the promise of Christmas. Here's what the prophet Isaiah says. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall weep like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Isaiah 35. How good is that? I mean, we could just stop right there and be filled with joy and gladness, but there's work to be done, right? This is what Howard Thurman said. Howard Thurman said, the symbol of Christmas, what is it? It's the rainbow arched over the roof of the sky when clouds are heavy and foreboding. It's the cry of life in the newborn babe when forced from its mother's nest. It claims the right to life. It's the brooding presence of the eternal spirit, making crooked ways straight and rough places smooth, tired hearts refreshed, dead hopes stir with newness of life. It's the promise of tomorrow at the close of every day the movement of life in defiance of death, and the assurance that love is sturdier than hate, that right is more confident than wrong, that good is more permanent than evil. Dr. Epperly writes, Christmas is the promise of tomorrow embodied in the adventures of today. The Prince of Peace is born among us and invites us on a holy adventure in which we discover that love is stronger than fear, reconciliation more powerful than hate, and peace more enduring than violence. Christmas asks us and our leaders to live by a new standard and to choose a new way of life. Christmas looks forward. Incarnate in a manger over 2,000 years ago, God is also the voice of tomorrow, the moral arc of history, calling us forward to horizons of hope and affirmation. God is fully here and now, but God's realm lies in the future also, inviting us to be citizens of a a world not yet born. I love that. The invitation of Christmas to be citizens of this world that is in the birth process. Listen to this. The politics of Christmas is guided by love, not coercion. Understanding, not name-calling. Embracing, not bullying. Solidarity, not division. And sacrifice, not greed. That's the politics of Christmas, which doesn't feel much like the politics that we experience, right? But that's what Christmas invites us into. On Christmas, no child is forgotten, no adult is left behind, and the wealthy and powerful discover that sacrifice. Not hoarding is the path to the Christ child. For those of us who've been to the graveside, we know the pain of loss, the loss of a friend, a child, a parent, even a spouse. And at Christmas, we remember our pain and we vow to combat all needless death that comes through violence, neglect, or greed. In affirming the movement of life in defiance of death, we discover eternity in the midst of time, right? We're joined with loved ones whom we mourn and we gain the vision of life everlasting and the joyous reunion with God and our loved ones in which love endures forever. With the carolers we sing, how silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his Evan. No ear may heart his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Right? I mean, it's so powerful that Christmas invites us into another world, right? It invites us into what we call heaven, a space where we're fully known and we know fully and we understand. And, and it's in our mourning, even of those that we love, that Christmas brings us to a place where we rejoice and celebrate because we can see God and see eternity right here in today. So I want to encourage you as you go throughout this fourth day of Christmas, take a few minutes to ponder and consider. Go through the Christmas practice there that's laid out in this book and really think through what is it, this this wonderful promise that Christmas brings, a new way of life, a new way of living, 
the promise of eternity that's found as well. All right. Hey, listen, have an awesome, awesome fourth day of Christmas.